Gough Whitlam will be forever remembered for bringing the Labor Party back into office on the 2nd of December 1972, 50 years ago. That ended 23 years of coalition government. 23 years, just think about it. My predecessor, Ben Chifley, spoke of the light on the hill. Ladies and gentlemen, it has flickered in recent years. But it is essential now for us, this week, to set it aflame again. It's fair to say Whitlam saved the Labor Party. The Labor Party in the 60s was an old-fashioned party run by old men that was totally out of date. Whitlam modernised the Labor Party, reformed it, and brought it back into office. You can't appreciate what sort of Prime Minister Whitlam was looking at recent Prime Ministers such as Malcolm Turnbull, Scott Morrison, Anthony Albanese. Whitlam was like none of them. He was six foot five inches, 195 centimetres. He had charisma. He was a big man in everything he did. He was intelligent. He was arrogant, he had a great sense of humour, he engaged in self-parody. Whitlam was a Prime Minister, but he was a born actor, he was a teacher, he was a comedian. What I used to say when I was travelling overseas with Whitlam was that you were travelling with the Encyclopaedia Britannica. Gough gave you a rundown of the history of every country you visited, and then he'd tell you that he was an expert on history from the time of King David to the present. And it was hardly a joke. After he won the 1972 election, Gough was determined to govern immediately. What would a sensible man do? He got the Governor General to swear him into 13 portfolios, his deputy Lance Barnard into 14 portfolios. They had a two-man government. It was called the due um for it, and Gough joked, the only trouble was there was one minister too many. He then joked, well, I was entitled to take 13 salaries, but I'm a modest man, so I just took one salary. Life under Gough as Prime Minister was perpetual excitement, drama, unpredictability. It was a wonderful time to be a political journalist. I've always said that there's the good golf and the bad golf. Now, when he was good, he was fantastic. Goff Whitlam created Medibank, now Medicare, universal health insurance. I mean, Australians today don't appreciate that we didn't have universal health insurance before the 1972 election. He introduced the needs funding for schools, big funding for private schools on a needs basis, an epic reform. He introduced no fault divorce, which changed social life in this country. He championed Aboriginal land rights. He transformed policy on the environment and committed the national government to intervene to protect the environment. Now, all these are epic changes. I mean, and our, our country, is changed forever because of the good golf, the social and cultural reforms that he introduced. Then, of course, we've got to remember there was the bad golf, the golf who spent too much money, the golf who let inflation get out of control, the golf who wasn't really interested in the economy, and the golf, of course, who presided over too much stagflation domestically which was reinforced by a very difficult global environment at the time. Then there was the other side to the bad golf. He broke conventions. He did things he shouldn't have done. He authorised a Pakistani money lender, Tyrath Kimlani, to have a loan commission from the Australian government, one of the worst scandals in the history of this country. So when golf was bad, he was very bad. And so this is, the, this is the dichotomy around the man. I was a young political correspondent covering the Whitlam government, and I think it's fair to say that I learnt a lot from Whitlam. 
And one of the things I learned from Whitlam is how to be a political journalist. And I guess it was under Whitlam that I, I fashioned my own philosophy of political journalism. And that was that when a government was doing really important things in the national interest, you should support them. Don't be cynical. If they're changing the country for the better, support them. But when they're making mistakes, when they're making blunders on a large scale, then you've got to call them to account. You've got to call them out and be prepared to do that regardless of the retaliation you face from them. It was always fun being with Goff, so I can remember being with him um, uh, in North Queensland at Cairns on one occasion and I walk past the hotel swimming pool and Goff's there walking in the water, not swimming, walking, not swimming. Uh, quick as a flash, he saw me and said, Comrade, I normally walk on the surface. Well, the image uh, of Goff that I remember most of all, of course, was the afternoon of the dismissal on the stairs of Parliament House when Whitlam was in full flight. Uh, standing to his full height at this extraordinary moment of history. He'd just been sacked. Now, many people would have been destroyed. They would have been distraught. They would have been incapable of being an effective politician at that time. Whitlam was inspired by the trauma and he delivered that extraordinary speech. Well, may we say, God save the Queen. <laughs> because nothing will save the Governor-General. This was Whitlam in full flight and fight.